Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us today. So I will discuss the results from the fourth nationwide graduate tracer study. So a graduate tracer study tries to find out the results of uh, higher education on outcomes such as employment with the end in view of improving the provision of higher education. Yeah. So I will discuss the research questions, the framework that we used for the analysis, methodology, and some results. So because of the time constraint, we just selected some key findings with the hope of picking your interest to look up the full report that you can download from the PIDS website. So we are still accepting comments on that. Okay, so the research questions, you want to find out how was their college life, basically, and then how was their post-college life? in terms of employment, um, citizenship, and overall life satisfaction. And we also tried to do a little bit of analysis on what they think about job education mismatch, which is a key issue in higher education. And then we tried to relate or find some, um, find some interesting um, relationship between college experience and post-college experience. For instance, if you recall that you have a better college experience, do you tend to be the one with better employment outcomes? So, to the extent that we can from the data. So the framework is, so we think that higher education or deciding to take up college is not an individual decision, but a household decision. And it's influenced by many factors, such as your parents' education, your sex, your motives and abilities, and of course, your prior education from preschool to uh, senior high. Those are all, those all factor in when, when you make a decision as a family, whether you go to college or not. And if you decide to go to college, then your experience will be mostly determined by the environment provided by your uh, higher education institution. So the quality of the curriculum, the faculty, the services and the facilities of the school. And so your pre-college life and your college life all determine to a great extent your uh, post-college experience. And in this particular study, we looked at labor force participation, citizenship formation, and uh, life satisfaction. So all these are influenced by, of course, labor market conditions and sociocultural uh, Con conditions as well. So this is our framework. Yeah. So methodology, so the study covers graduates from 2009 to 2011. So it took a long time to release the results because of um, substantial implementation and procurement um, issues. But we, see, we hope that this is still relevant for us. So it's representative at the regional level with public and private um, HEI disaggregation. The total sample size is 35,297. So that's the biggest so far of all the GTS. So the methodology is face-to-face -face interview <coughs> using a structured questionnaire. So this GTS is actually, uh, has the most uh, comprehensive questionnaire so far of all the GTS. So it included not just personal and family background, college experience and work experience, but we also included questions on social political participation and life satisfaction. In terms of the implementation, the management of the GTS was by the CHED regional offices and the national offices, uh, national office, also a first of its kind in this uh, round and PIDS provided support on questionnaire development, training, sampling design, and analysis. With the end in view that in the future round, CHED will be the one to do the entire GTS because it's the only institution with the proper motivation to conduct a policy-oriented GTS. So the data collection result, we were able to interview 11,000 doesn't point. 547 uh, graduates. So our response rate is 32.7%. So it's considered, it's low, but still within 
na global experience. So GTS are known to be to have low response rates. So global experience is within 30 to 60 percent. And some of the regions with high response rates are region one, uh, nine, ten, and eleven. So per particularly NCR has a low response rate because some of the big HEIs here in NCR refuse to share uh, their in students' data. So most of the respondents were only were only traced through Facebook or other social media platforms and through house to house because they only shared names and degree. So no address, no contact number. Yeah. So results, let's look at college experience. In terms of the programs that they graduated in, mo more than 70% of the graduates are concentrated in the top 15 courses. So there's few variation in the courses that they took. And there's also little variation between male and female uh, choices. So BS Nursing is the runaway winner. More than 20% took uh, BS Nursing. And then it's usually followed by education, business administration, um, information technology, criminal justice. Yeah. And in why they chose these degrees? They think that these are the degrees that will give them immediate employment and the most uh, ad promising career advancement options. Yeah. And just to take note that 20% of the graduates also said that they chose the CHED priority course, meaning they took the course that will get them the scholarship. And there's 17% who said that there was, they didn't have any choice at, not at all when they uh, entered college. So yes. So yeah, learner engagement. So we asked the graduates how, how, to what extent they had a sense of belonging to their university and were they, they did, do they felt uh, prepared for the study when they were just entering college. And those, the results are not too strong. So only around one fourth felt strongly about uh, having affinity with their university and being prepared for college. In terms of interactions, student life is mostly concentrated with uh, fulfilling academic requirements. So there's not much interaction outside school or outside school requirements. Not much interactions with students who are different from them, however they may have perceived that question. And yeah, so there's low partic participation in extracurricular activities all throughout. And then in terms of faculty, however, they are very set satisfied with their faculty across the board also. So the faculty gave clear explanation, made use of the time effectively, etc. So more than 70 to 80% gave the top two ratings for their faculty. In terms of the skills that they develop, they believe that their program develop working with others and learning independently the best. However, uh, they feel that they did not develop much their communication skills, critical thinking skills, and solving complex problem skills. So if you will um, notice, these are also the skills that the employers are saying that are the barriers why they cannot or they are not hiring fresh fresh graduates as much. So the students and the employers are are in agreement as to the barriers to employment with regard to these skills. Yeah. So when they were asked what should be added in their curriculum, they requested for communication courses. In terms of overall college experience, they believe that college life had the strongest effect on their personal and intellectual growth, but not much on 
translating what they learned in college into action and translating what they learned in college to real life situation. So they're not yet seeing the relevance of college life. So now we go to post-college experience. First is on employment. So these are job transition indicators. So how many months did they start looking for work after graduation? How many months did they look for work? And how many months did they start to work after graduation? So for a total, for all the graduates, the mean months, so they started looking for work on average five months after graduation, but the median is zero. So the data is very widely dispersed. Graduates of pri private HEIs begin uh, job search a little bit later, 5.7 months versus 3.5. And they also look for jobs a little longer, 8.4 8 months versus 7.6 versus uh, compared to their public counterparts. So similar job transition for males and females. And of course, for courses with PRC requirement or the professional license exam requirement. They started looking for work six months after graduation and they were working around 15 months after graduation. So that's how long their dependency period is. Quite long, actually. With regards to field of study, so nursing graduates land on their first job 18 months after graduation on average. So that includes review, preparing for the exam, and then looking for work. So they looked for work for, on average 10 months. So if you think about it, they chose nursing because it's the one, they think it's the one that will give them immediate employment. But actually, they had to look for work for 10 months, and they have to wait 18 months after graduation before being employed. So the ones with the short uh, transition from uh, college life to employment are graduates of journalism and, inform and information courses, social and behavioral, uh, which one? Uh, journalism and information and agricultural, agriculture, forestry and fishery courses. Nine months and, nine months. Respectively. Employment rates. So for the graduates, 86 out of 100 are in the labor force and out of 86, 75 are employed. So we also showed here the results from the labor force survey fourth quarter of 2014, which is the closest to our study period. So these are results for college graduates 30 years old and below to match our uh, survey respondents. So as you can see, the LFS and GTS results are close, similar. And I highlighted the regions that, are, that have high response rates. So these are the ones that you, are, you can be confident that the results are re regionally representative. In terms of courses, the ones that are most employed or have high employment rates are secondary education graduates and accountancy graduates. So their labor force participation is around 90% and employment rate is also 90, 90 to 94%. In terms of the types of occupations that they're holding, 52% are professionals or associate professionals. There are more professionals in the public um, HEI graduates compared to private HEIs. And then among males and females, there are more females in, among professionals also and among clerical and support workers. So 
sorry. So in the previous result, there was some interest on these elementary occupations. What are these jobs that are held by g college graduates? So we added a breakdown here. So they are usually cleaners or helpers or laborers. So some of our college graduates are holding this job, these jobs. The median wage is 460 pesos, and slightly higher for males. So, so the slightly higher wage for males stem from the fact they are, that they are holding the better paying jobs. So when it comes to very specific job classification, for instance, uh, four digit pisok, they have the same uh, pay. But when you view it like this group, major groupings, it would appear that um, the males are earning higher. For instance, in service and sales workers, so the median pay for males is 538 versus 344 females. But within this group, the, the males are, usually, are mostly police workers, whereas the females are clerks. So, in terms of addressing the wage gap, it's more of not the pay itself, but in making females uh, get the better paying jobs as well. So we did a little bit of investigation on education occupation matching. Oops. So some signs. So the graduates feel that they did not sufficiently develop communication, critical thinking, and problem-solving skills, which we saw earlier. And then 70%, less than 70% think that their college degree is relevant to their first job. Less than half of them consider occupational skills, which we consider as proxy for what they learned in college as the main reason for, land, for landing their first or current job. And then finally, uh, around a fourth of them think that outdated skills learned in college is keeping them from getting a good job. So these are fairly uh, strong signs that the graduates feel that there is a mismatch. So to investigate further, we tried to compare their current occupation versus their baccalaureate program, so a horizontal mismatch, uh, horizontal matching, the appropriateness of the degree completed compared to their job. So the limitation of this exercise is that we don't have information regarding score skill, core skills learned that is of use to all possible uh, occupations. For instance, if my degree was nursing and I became a contact center um, agent, with an account on antidepressant drug, is that a mismatch or a match? If I'm a political science graduate and I'm teaching history to grade school, is that a match or a mismatch? So to reduce the arbitrariness of that exercise, we focused on courses that have PRC requirement, those that require um, professional license requirement, which are the courses that typically have more defined matched occupations. So the result is that half, just half of the graduates with PRC required courses are in job, jobs that match their degree. So that's true for nursing and most other courses. So the course with the highest match is 65% BS Pharmacy. And the course with the least match is 4.2% BS Customs Administration. So there's only 4% of Customs Administration graduates that are working as Customs Officers. Customs Officer, yes. Yeah, so just to give an idea about this 47.2 nursing graduates are working on jobs that do not match their degree, right? So what are these jobs here? So 11% are, con are contact center information clerks, 
retail and wholesale trade managers, general office clerks. So general office clerks means, for instance, they are a receptionist in the hospital. So it's not a match because they are nursing graduate. So some are police officer. Some are nursing associate professionals. Some are shopkeepers, shop sales assistants. So maybe they are a sales assistant in a pharmacy. So still not a match. Some are teaching. Some are data entry clerks. Yeah. So other aspects of post-college life, we now look at social political participation. Good citizenship is mostly associated with voting, obeying laws, and paying taxes. That's all. Mm, so they're not very uh, participating in social political association, serving in the military, and keeping watch on the actions of the government are not very salient for our graduates. But they do have a clear belief on what is ethical behavior. So most of them believe that these actions are not ethical. In terms of political and social actions, there's very low participation. There's also low participation in groups. So in terms of political and social actions, they're mostly doing charity, 47%, giving for a cause. And then in groups, they're mostly in church or other religious organizations. Overall life satisfaction. So graduates are most satisfied with their health and their homes. So they're still living with their parents and they're still young. <laughs> That's why they're satisfied. <laughs> But they are look for with their current job and employment opportunities. Of course, they are in the worst time when it comes to employment because they're just starting. They are not satisfied with, least satisfied with the national government and their financial situation. So least satisfaction with the national government, but very low participation in social and political action. Maybe, let's help them connect it. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So lastly, we tried to relate college experience to post-college experience. So what we did here is to explore the extent to which college experience influence post-college outcomes. So earlier we saw the ratings, right, for learning engagement, faculty, and there are also some about um, services of the school, facilities, so we want to relate that with post-college outcomes, which are on um, citizenship formation, overall life satisfaction. So those are several indicators that are given in ratings, right? You saw the bar charts. So in order for us to, be, to relate them, we need to summarize those information into scores or index scores. And we did um, principal component analysis to do that. So once we have the index scores, for instance, for learner engagement and overall life satisfaction, we run them on, uh, we run regressions on them. For instance, the outcome is um, overall life satisfaction. And on the excess, we added the college experience indices, faculty, um, learner engagement, support services, etc. And then we also added some student characteristics to see just the relationship. So it's a very um, crude way to see the relationship, but uh, we hope it's still informative. So for the regression of life satisfaction index on college experience, we see that Learner engagement and overall college experience have the largest effects on life satisfaction. So if, you, if the student was more active in his uh, college life, if he was joining more extracurricular activities, participating more in interaction with students, that is actually related to having better life satisfaction from this exercise. 
And then when when with, with regard to employment, we also see that learner engagement, support services, and overall college experience have significant effects on the odds of being employed. So actually our um, college life has a huge impact on our post-college life, it turns out. Yep. So just to summarize the findings, graduates are concentrated in a few courses. College life is mostly focused on academic activities. Labor force participation and median wage are similar to LFS counterparts and the females tend to hold the less paying job within occupation groups. Job education mismatch seems pervasive in the sense that um, the graduates and the employers are saying the same thing on what's keeping them from getting a good job. And to address this, it seems that it's not necessarily needed to add new courses, but more on to improve the method of instruction. Because you cannot have a course on critical uh, thinking, right? It's embed it's developed in you from the way that you from the way the teacher handles the course that's that lets you develop uh, these skills and communication skills yes there are courses on that but also in all your other courses you must incorporate developing communication skills right so it's not a um, mutually exclusive approach Social political life is not active. Their contribution to the public good is confined to vo voting, obeying laws, and paying taxes. Despite being concerned about their earnings and financial condition, overall life satisfaction is still high. So they're very optimistic <coughs> in a way. Positive college experience is strongly associated with private and public returns to higher education. So the better your college experience, the better you, your um, uh, employment outcomes and the better you contribute to political and social activities related. Some recommendation, it seems that the labor market information should be shared to students in the earlier stages of secondary education, even before senior high, to allow them to better assess among alternative career paths and their preferences. As you saw, among the top courses, only nursing and IT are actually the good paying ones. So the ones that they think are good paying are not actually good paying. So there's a gap in their choice and what's going on in the labor market. College instruction must be thoroughly improved in order to substantially develop communication, critical thinking and problem solving skills. As I said earlier, it's not necessarily adding courses, but improving the method of instruction. And then CHED and HEIs can formulate improvements to a student's college life that will have desirable effects beyond employment. So HEIs should promote extracurricular participation, extracurricular activities, student groups, interaction with different people. These are, these are turning out to be the important ones when you go out of uh, the school. Yeah, so thank you.